a comic Russian novel? It's possible. The Golden Calf by Ilya Ilf and Evgeny Petrov was first published in the early 1930s in the Soviet Union, uh, first serialized over a number of years in a popular magazine. Funny? Maybe, but I doubted that its humor would translate over eight decades to an English reader in the United States. But my god, it did. This is a book that can best be described as a caper, featuring Ostap Bender, a larger-than-life con man who puts, brings together a team of earnest but simple bandits to pull off his biggest haul yet. In search of a secret millionaire, secret because no one was allowed to be publicly rich in this time and place, they find Alexander Koreko. Koreko lives as a humble, poor clerk in a corporation, but he has millions stashed away that he made through his own scheme, a business fraud that took advantage of the Soviet Union's earliest and most chaotic years. Koreko plans to uh, bide his time until socialism fails, capitalism returns, and he can enjoy his riches in peace. That is, if Ostip Bender and his strategy of principled swindling doesn't take it from him first. It's a fun plot, but what really takes the novel to the next level is the sharp satiric eye that the authors cast on every level of society. Ilf and Petrov are not quite subversive, but they have an edge. Nobody is immune from their withering wordplay, from the secret capitalists who hide out in an insane asylum to the mournful intelligentsia who fakes a hunger strike. From the nonsensical bureaucrats to the Chicago men who, during Prohibition, are in search for a recipe for moonshine. There's also my favorite side character, an old man who makes puzzles for the newspapers, now struggling to craft uh, riddles that are socialist enough to be published. He's left to desperately put together number games that, through complex multiplication and division, prove the superiority of the Soviet system over all other systems. The galactic cast of characters stands in relief against the vivid landscape. Take the novel's description of the men in Chernomorsk, the fictional city where the majority of the action takes place and based on the city of Odessa. It reads, Nobody wore a hat. One could occasionally spot a cap, but a mane of wild black hair standing on end was much more common, and a bald, sun-tanned pate glimmering like a melon lying in the field and attempting you to write something on it with an indelible pencil was more common still. The light touch is carried into the significant first meeting between Ostap Bender and Koreko. Bender's ready to blackmail Koreko, but he slowly begins to realize that uh, his target has a few tricks of his own. Before they begin speaking, the men can't stop falsely smiling at each other. The text reads, This escalation of smiles and emotions was reminiscent of a manuscript by the composer Franz Liszt, where a note on the first page said to play fast. On the second page, very fast. On the third, much faster. On the fourth, as fast as possible. And on the fifth, still faster. Seeing that Koreko was already on page five, and that any further competition was simply impossible, Ostip got down to business. After this encounter, which of course doesn't go as planned, Bender is left to a conclusion that pokes fun at the reigning Soviet philosophy. He tells his fellow bandits, Investigating Koreko's case might take a long time. God only knows how long. And since there is no God, nobody knows. What works about this novel is that it's not afraid of toying with the absurd, and it's got enough intelligence and insight underscoring the hilarity to give it substance. At times, it is apparent that the novel was initially serialized. The text wanders somewhat. The extraordinary number of uh, secondary characters is a little bit dizzying, and at times it, the story seems to lack a complete vision. But the book's written well enough that it's still fun to move through. Konstantin Gurevich and Helen Anderson are the team behind this very first complete edition of The Golden Calf to be translated into English. They offer an introduction, very sparse notes at the end of the book, and also an appendix that offers an alternative, alternative ending to the novel. Well, I appreciate that the translators didn't clutter the text with a lot of unnecessary and tangential notes. The fact that there are so few of them, and that they're un actually unmarked in the pages, there's no numbers or anything, left me to completely forget that they were there most of the time, which is a shame, because the notes that are there are very interesting and offer a good deal of clarification at this tumultuous time in the Soviet Union's history. I was left wishing that 
the text had pointed me to the ones that were there more clearly. I also would have appreciated a translator's reflection on how they handled all the wordplay in the novel. So much of the humor uh, hinges on naming and turns of phrase, and I laughed out loud often, um, but I did wonder how the syntax made that journey from Russian to English. Overall, though, I'm grateful to Gurevich and Anderson for bringing forth an unusual and completely delightful novel. They carried forth the satire across generations and continents. It is an impressive feat and a lot of fun.